I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about accessibility, drag and drop interfaces, emoji, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a great blog post with ARIA examples. Now, ARIA is a term standing for Accessible Rich Internet Application Suite, as determined by the W3C. And this wonderful blog post goes over different ways to use ARIA in your HTML. So here we have a bunch of examples, the first one being an accessible input tooltip, and this does not use JavaScript, just ARIA attributes. So if we look at your username, it says your username is your email address, and same thing, little hint, with the password. And then it goes through and explains the HTML that you can use to accomplish these different feats. And here we have a label. Inside the label we have the input. And then here's the ARIA attribute, which is prefixed with ARIA, and then a hyphen, and described by, which is going to go for this tooltip. And it shows you right here, uh, the value of that attribute is username tip, which is the ID of this div. And actually, we also have a role which describes what kind of attribute it is. In this case, it is the tooltip. Now, there are a bunch of different possible options that you can use, and this is, of course, going to be accessible in all the different browsers, accessibility being very important so that people with disabilities can access the site. So we have different things here, drop downs, pretty good about who we are, what we do, and then we can also see the ARIA attributes there. Anyway, not going to go over everything in this article, but definitely check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. It's very important to keep your sites accessible, especially when you're making rich internet applications. Very cool stuff. Well, next up are some drag and drop interaction ideas. This is from the CodeDrops blog. And of course, they always include the code, so you can download the source here. But let's just take a look at this demo, because that's really what is interesting here. There's a couple different drag and drop ideas, and they're listed all here. There's a bottom area, sidebar, page, scale, modal. Let's just try this bottom area one. So when I click and drag one of these, whoa, what? look at that. Where did that come from, the future? It came from the bottom area. I know that because it, it says it in the label right there. And, and so it pops up there, and we can drag stuff there. There's also a sidebar, which is a pretty similar idea. There's a page scale one what? where this whole thing slides in and you can drop stuff. Uh, I thought this modal one was pretty interesting. I'd never seen something like this. It's a little bit tricky if you just click because it pops up. But if you actually click and drag, then oh, you can okay. choose which one you want to go to. So these ideas are just a little bit more on the experimental side, but still very cool design ideas if you're trying to implement a drag and drop interface. Yeah, CodeDrops always has pretty interesting stuff on there. Definitely. Cool ideas. Next up, everybody loves emoji, including Twitter, who recently open sourced the library that they use, and they called it Twemoji. Now, very clever. Yeah, it's like they just put the first couple letters of the company name in front of emoji. Oh, yeah. 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 I see what they did there. So here is an example of emoji that you might see uh, on a tweet. It says, today we're open sourcing our emoji to share with everybody. And they got you know the, the, the little smiley face there, face with stuck out tongue and winking eye. They got some uh, woman with bunny ears, some clinking beer mugs. Great. So if you've ever tried to uh, get emoji in your site, that can be a little bit cumbersome because what are you going to do? Go ahead and replace every single image on the page or emoji with uh, images? No, just use a library called Twemoji. Now, this is going to be uh, in JavaScript, and actually, they include all of the different assets to go along with it. So you have access to the different images inside of the library. So just clone this onto your site or use it inside of a, uh, a CDN. They have a free CDN that you can use. Throw that in your page, and then call this twemoji.parse method. And that 
you pass a string with the emoji character code in there, and it will give it a class of emoji, make sure it's not draggable, and even replace it with one of the images that are included in the library. Now, this even includes different sized images, and in addition to the parse method, you can also give it a different DOM element to use. Anyway, uh, pretty simple, but very useful, so definitely check that out if you need to support emoji on your site. And who doesn't, honestly? Uh, literally no one. Very cool stuff. Next up is a blog post called Everybody Scrolls. I love this blog post because once I tell you about it, you'll understand that the title is literally the TLDR, Everybody Scrolls. This is an article from Rebecca Gordon. Very cool stuff here. Lots of good UX research. Basically, they did a test to determine whether or not users actually scroll on a web page or if they mostly look at what is known as above the fold, so before you actually scroll on a web page. And it's hard to even say what's above the fold these days because of responsive web design. There's different sized devices. You know, what's above and below the fold can change based on your screen resolution. Back in the early days of the web, people were always debating what should be above the fold because that could be all that somebody looks at on your web page. Exactly. People were new to the web, they maybe wouldn't scroll down, and you could pretty easily determine what was above the fold, just like the fold of a newspaper, because pretty much everyone had the same screen resolution, like 800 by 600 or 1024 768. But now and there was only like one browser. Yeah, it was really easy. We should just go back to yeah. that. It's perfect. If only we could turn back time. If only. They did four tests here. They had a control image where they said 91% of people scrolled, 91% scrolled immediately, and that same 91% reached the bottom. There was also the scroll arrow. So they had a little arrow here showing people that they should scroll down. They had a shorter image, and then they had this animated image. And basically, in all of these cases, 90 to 100 percent of people scrolled and reached the bottom. It was only in this animated image that a few less people reached the bottom. And even then, it was still a pretty high number. So the lesson is almost all participants scrolled in this study no matter what, and that, that is the TLDR of the articles, that pretty much everyone scrolls. About the only time that you could confuse users with scrolling is if you had a certain responsive size and you had some really nice padding around maybe like a hero image and it looked like maybe the content just ended. It might not necessarily be intuitive that you need to scroll there. So actually having a little bit of stuff cut off towards the bottom of web pages tends to help people scroll a little bit better. Citation needed on that one. Uh, I've yeah, read give, that. Give a little hint that something is lurking below the fold. Is there. I've read that in a couple different places. But other than that, pretty much almost all the time, people will scroll down a web page. So the next time you hear somebody arguing about whether or not something should be above or below the fold, truth is it really doesn't matter. TLDR. Yep. Everybody scrolls. Everybody scrolls. Next up, we have a great blog post that attempts to summarize the accessibility of all of the new HTML5 attributes across browsers. And you're going to give us the summary of the summary. Yes. No, I'm just going to scroll with everybody so that they can see what browsers support what. So uh, as we've been going along, you know, we've gotten all of these different new HTML5 elements. And hey, how are they supported everywhere? Well, uh, the accessibility support is OK in Chrome and Firefox. It's not that great in IE, only scoring about a 37 out of 100, or 37 percent, if my math is correct. Is it? Yeah. I'm no. going to have to think about that one. Go ahead. Um, citation needed. Now, uh, this only goes through and lists Windows browsers for the moment. It is a work in progress. So you can see these check marks mean it is partially supported. So for example, this audio attribute is supported across all three browsers. In Firefox, keyboard access is provided with Firefox-specific shortcuts. And Chrome and IE11 have full accessibility support. Now, once again, accessibility is very important when you're developing your site so that people who use assisted devices can browse everything on your site. Now, 
If you are using any of these elements, go ahead and just spin by this page. We'll have a link in the show notes. Just check and see if the inputs you are using or the attributes you're using are supported. That's very cool. It's kind of like the site caniuse.com, but for accessibility. Exactly. Very cool stuff. Well, that's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you.